All right, I want to talk to you for a moment about retaining and developing your workforce. It's hard. Recruiting is hard. Retaining top employees is hard. Then you've got onboarding, payroll, benefits, time and labor management. You need to take care of your workforce, and you can only do this successfully if you commit to transforming your employee experience. This is where ISOF comes in. They empower you to be successful. We've seen it with a number of companies that we've worked with, and this is why we partner with them here at WorkDefined. We trust them, and you should too. Check them out at isolvedhcm.com. One background check isn't always enough to protect your business. Sysiv's continuous criminal monitoring solution helps HR professionals stay informed of any criminal activity post-hire, giving you the peace of mind after onboarding. Whether you're in healthcare, transportation, or finance, our continuous monitoring ensures you have real-time data you need to respond to risk immediately. Protect your organization with Sysiv's continuous criminal monitoring because workplace safety doesn't stop after hiring. Hey, this is William Tincup and Ryan Leary. You are listening and hopefully watching the Use Case Podcast. Today we have video on from Magnet. We're going to be learning all about her and uh, the technology. So first of all, Ryan, how are you doing? I am fantastic and excited to always, learn. I don't know. I, I don't know Magnet, so I'm excited to I am, learn. And I am too, actually. This first is time here. Yeah, Ryan always gets uh, uh, upset if I don't say how ask him how he's doing. So. <laughs> So that's kind of a bit. That's well, there's, bit there's, we have. there's backstory here. There is backstory there. There is backstory. He often forgets to even say that I'm here. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. So, uh, Vidya, would you do us a favor and uh, the audience a favor and introduce yourself and Magnet? Sure. First off, thanks for having me. Sure. Uh, great to meet you both, um, Ryan and Tinko. Yeah. Make sure Notice she said my name fantasy. first. I like that. Like, you I can like get the first. reference right there. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so Vidya Srinivasan, I, um, I am the chief product and marketing officer uh, for uh, Magnet. Um, Magnet is a, you know, a pioneer and a leader in a contingent workforce management industry. Um, and people know, you know, Magnet as like, you know, when you think of contingent people, some people call it external workforce. Uh, some people think of temp workforce, you know, you have IC, gig, workers. So any of it that does not fit the full-time employee right. bill, you know, is what Magnet helps Fortune 500 companies around the globe um, help, you know, structure the program from a strategic standpoint. Uh, but all the capabilities and services we provide is actually powered by our technology, uh, which we call the Magnet Platform. Um, and we recently, you know, just I think it's been um, six weeks, we launched our, um, you know, uh, a new version of the platform that's AI powered and outcome driven. And that's what I'm excited to talk to you guys about today. Oh, that's fantastic. So um, just so I'm uh, clear and the audience is clear, you do both the services side uh, delivery as and that you run your own technology rather than using somebody else's VMS or something like that? that. Yes, exactly. So we are a tech-enabled services company. Very cool. Is, is a way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Most most aren't. I mean, Ryan grew up in that space, mm -hmm. and uh, he could probably tell you a little bit more about it than I can. But in dealing with a lot of staffing, RPO, MSPs over the years, it's like it's cobbled together. Yeah. Or, or worse, years ago was proprietary. They built their own <laughs> stuff and they were horrible at it because they're not tech companies. They're not. That's that wasn't their bit. Yeah. So uh, I'm excited to learn uh, about Magnet. Tell us a little bit more about it. Yeah. So um, you know, obviously, as 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 you you asked, we are a tech enabled services company. Uh, so we have a layer of um, you know being the managed services provider who can help you guide customers from totally an unmanaged stage of maturity, if you will, right? So customers sometimes when you're especially small and just starting where your contingent workforce is not a big, you know, um, population, you end up managing yourself, right? Through procurement where you have services, you know, SOWs that you open, get vendors into the door and 
all of a sudden it grows into this, you know, completely an unmanaged spend. And that's where, you know, companies usually struggle and they w look for companies like us that can help, um, you know, through help them through that um, journey of creating a program and then really leveraging the technology um, and the data and analytics that can help them sort of future proof what they need to drive, right? And the goal of how we do it as a tech enabled service is really three folds, right? So one is really simplify the way we engage with the contingent program. As you can imagine, if it's unmanaged today, right, you as a as a client or a hiring manager or in procurement, um, you know, you really have to do all the work, um, sort of, you know, figuring out where the vendors are, where, you know, think about the, you know, freelancers, right, ecosystem that's growing up today. Uh, there's a lot of talent management platforms. So the heavy lifting of knowing what you want um, and, you know, how it funnels to all the hiring managers within your organization is a pretty heavy, heavy task. So that's where Magnet can help. Um, and one of the ways in which our technology helps is really with the system of engagement, right? Um, if you look at traditional VMS, and Brian looks like you, you, you know <laughs> some of the VMSs, yeah. um, you know, including ourselves, right? I mean, this is a 30-year old company, Magnet, um, uh, you know, and all the vendors, right? The first VMS was launched in 1995 um, and Pro Unlimited, formerly, that's Magnet now, so it was formerly, was the first one to launch the VMS to the market. Right. So when you think about the complexity in the workflows, um, the amount of manual process involved and the, you know, the handoff between services and technology, like you said um, before, uh, it's it's not like, you know, a SaaS product. Right. Uh, it's still sort of antiquated and sort of like the, the start and stops between where services comes in and where technology picks up. So it's very fragmented, very siloed. Um, so a lot of what, you know, today's or the current landscape of VMSs have been very antiquated in that sense of thinking about automation, uh, seamless integrations into the ecosystem, whether it's ERP system, HRISS system, right? There's tons of systems. So how do we really simplify that engagement? So you as um, the user or the consumer of this program has easy access to you know, recruit, source, hire, onboard, um, right? Uh, approve all of the processes on an everyday basis that people go through uh, can be streamlined and simplified um, is, is a big part of what, you know, we are introducing with our technology. And the cool thing is, is, is really we just in the last six weeks announced our new Gen AI assistant, um, just called Maggie. Uh, and Maggie can help you do all of those things, everyday tasks, um, you know, with a simple voice command, just like, you know, I do my shopping with Alexa, right? I, I hope uh, it's better than Google because it does, <laughs> Google does not love me. Yeah, Gemini, is that what you're referring yeah, to? Yeah, just, just, oh, just simple, like, talk yeah. to text and uh, like basic stuff. It just doesn't yeah. understand me. Yeah, I mean, I think that actually you hit on something very core to our philosophy, Ryan, which is, right, when you think about Maggie and Je the possibilities of Gen AI, right, mm -hmm. um, there are people who are excited, right, obviously nerds and tech geeks, like, including myself, mm -hmm. possibilities are infinite. But then there are also people who are skeptical about data privacy, security, right, a lot of things that sure. uh, is going to be a pretty, you know, uh, head uphill battle to deal with infosec and IT teams and all of that stuff. So I think there's the the balance between skepticism and the excitement. Uh, but at the end of the day, we want this to be more practical, right, for for consumers of what we are providing. And we kind of think about these in three types of use cases, right? So one is executing day-to-day -day tasks. So as a as a as an anecdote or, or you know one of the things that we work with customers and hiring managers is creating a requisition right so i just want to hire a software engineer in san francisco right let's just say that and if you think about the process in today's world of the bms 
the combo of services and tech, it takes on an average of five to seven days to just get through the process of opening a requisition, okay. telling them what they're looking for, what the budget you need, and potentially telling your staffing companies, I need this. This is what I'm looking for, right? But with the concept of Gen AI and really the ability to, you know, um, leverage our, you know, system of record, as we call it, which is the data, uh, which has these talent pools, right, that you can pull from. And it could be anywhere from, you know, your own direct sourcing, your brand of internal pool that you have. You could have, you know, st staffing supplier provided talent pools, or you could be plugged into one of those freelance management systems, right? But the ability for our, like Maggie, to look at all of your talent pools and say, here's all the recommended, you know, relevant candidates for what you're looking for, and immediately being able to, for you to be able to select a few and then pass it on to your supplier to say, go process these, right? Or set up the mm -hmm. interview. Right. So those are the kinds of things that could really take the five to seven days to a matter of a few hours or a day. Right. At the max. Again, it, it'll vary by uh, the adoption and the comfort mm -hmm. level of every company and all of that. But the idea of simplifying that engagement and drastically having an impact on day to day use cases from requisition to sourcing or finding the right talent or even approving time cards. You know, mm -hmm. uh, being able to do that with the voice command uh, is where I think our approach is to focus on those things. So it, it drastically changes the lives of people that are, you know, like really frustrated, right, in a lot of ways today. Yeah. So, so. question, I, I, I know we're going to get deep into into everything, what, what y'all doing and product yeah. and all. But you mentioned something that made me think about my, my the time that I spent. Uh, working in the, in this area, five to seven days just to open up the requisition, get it through, get it into the agencies. Yeah. Hey, it's Bob Pulver, host of podcast. Human-centric AI, AI-driven transformation, hiring for skills and potential, dynamic workforce ecosystems, responsible innovation. These are some of the themes my expert guests and I chat about, and we certainly geek out on the details. Nothing too technical. I hope you check it out. It was that when I was then. That was 15 years ago. Like, it, it hasn't she changed. She did say like, antiquated. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm kind of but antiquated. That's, that's yeah. a surprise, Twice. right? But I'm, I mean, it's really still that long? Yeah. It is. Um, and, yeah. you know, the uh, and one of the reasons, like, you know, I'm here <laughs> and, you know, there I've, I've recruited a lot of new tech talent into the company huh. is I come from tech, right? Yeah. I mean, my, my entire life has been in SaaS. Um, and, uh, I think it's just the evolution, Ryan, to your point, mm -hmm. uh, the pace of technology innovation has just been not non-existent in a lot of ways, right? I, uh, a, a lot of the vendors, right, including ourselves were sort of working around the service construct, right? Right. Yep. As opposed to thinking about technology, right. front-ending a lot of things, right? So. It's just the way uh, shifting the way we think about how technology can be leveraged. And one of the things I tell users, um, because I was just in a, on a two week trip to EMEA, like uh, to visit some of our customers and talk about platform and Maggie and a bunch of other things, um, is it's you know so for so long all of us right users have spent time and budget and resources training people to use a system. Right. That's just, that, that cannot be the, right? right? We are the users of the system. It has to be simple. So it's really shifting that to say, it's time for the system to train to the user. Right. Right. So 100%. it's really kind of rethinking, reimagining the, you know, the technology um, uh, value uh, in the equation of how the program is getting delivered to the customer. Well, I so, think there's two things there that, that yeah. I'd like to unpack. One is uh, a lot of folks in the staffing, RPO, uh, outsourced recruiting, we'll just say, yeah. they start in services, they're not tech. You mentioned that. The folks that even, even tried to build tech have failed, uh, by and large, not every, not every case. Um, it's because they don't, they're not technologists. 
they don't yeah. think like technologists and, and they don't have the staff that are technologists. So we see a lot of, of failure of things that's kind of get spun out or acquired and then spun out again. So that happens a lot. The second point is, I believe, Ryan, the, the reason that things haven't changed as much since you were in staffing and then in, at RPO at Conexa is the staffing buyer, the margins are so thin that they're not really innovators. I mean, they might say they're innovators, like at Staffing World or Staffing Industry Analysts or something like that, or CWS. They might say they're innovators. Mm-hmm. They're not innovators. They're laggards. And so I can see kind of the combination of those two things, them not being really tech savvy okay. and also it just being really thin on the on the profit side. So they need a technology company. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say your technology first, service in second. Yeah. You might you might not like that, but they need a technology company that that actually understands that, and understands them. They're not going to push the boundaries of innovation. That's not their bid. Right. You know, their their bid is trying to get uh, the candidates a high quality candidate as fast as possible, as cheap as possible. That's their that's their bid. And you're yeah. enabling that. Well, hopefully, you're say, enabling that. Yeah, I would say you're spot on because you know that's another um, discovery for me. Right when I came into the industry <laughs> two and a half years ago, is you're dealing with procurement. And, and Ryan, oh. I think mm-hmm. procurement, we know that has not changed. No. Right? There's no. one goal which is cost savings. Yeah, right mm-hmm. for the company. Uh, and and that's the right goal. I mean, you need yeah. the you that's, know that's the traction that's that's analysis uh, for yeah. the organization. But I think one of the things that I'm starting to see, which is very encouraging, is the fact that now, you know, contingent workforce, again, the evolution needs to happen, is like more and more workers, you know, baby boomers retiring, new people entering the workforce, and the younger generation wanting to really, you know, think about work as the Uberization of work, right? So they just want to be gig workers. They just want to do some of this, right? They don't think about work the way, at least my generation, you know, without mm-hmm. without going into specific generations. But, you know, at, at least what I used to think about, right, is it's, it's my job. I do it full time, right? That's not how people are thinking about it. And with the growth of IC gig economy, right, broadly, I think the expectation to treat FTEs and contingent workers is also sort of raising the bar, which means, you know, HR gets involved or talent acquisition gets involved. And I think that's when the actual notion of not thinking about contingent workforce as a cost savings effort, but really in the construct of talent and ensuring that, you know, the talent represents you know, in a way talks to the brand of the company, right? So that's why you're starting to see direct sourcing sort of, you know, taking some front, you know, front place in organizations to say, let me do direct sourcing of the temp workers with my brand because so, so I think it's a, it's a healthy evolution that's happening, even though I don't know why it took so long, but it's happening (laughs) at the right time. Um, And I think- Well, I can tell you that there's two things that we see yeah. One is practitioners, both HR and TA, have they have to care more about candidate experience yeah. because of the transparency, the era of transparency that we live in. So they're kind of being forced at gunpoint to care more uh, about that. And secondly, candidate behavior has changed uh, yeah. drastically, especially when, when everyone's carrying around uh, this. They apply to a job. Instance. It's like texting someone. Right. Yeah. You know, when you're on mm-hmm. WhatsApp and you're text somebody, you expect them to text you back. Uh-huh. That's how they view companies and jobs. Yeah. And so their buyer, I say buyer behavior, their cons- their behavior has changed, which is forcing change everywhere else. I don't think that HR or TA wanted this change or wants this thing. I think they're, they're you know, dragging and kicking. They're going to be pulled into this. But if they don't respond to candidates in seconds and minutes, those candidates are gone. So, yeah. Ryan, I, I think I interrupted you with a question. Sorry yeah, no. That. So I, I'm I'm really curious here, and this maybe is a little off topic, a little off off product here. Um, but I'm really curious about the evolution. Right? So we we've talked about 
a little bit about the evolution of of VMS and and you and you all through thirty years, right? You've been around for thirty yeah, years. years yeah. yeah. So where do we? Where does this change, which I, I know is happening now, but where does this become mainstream in the industry and expected uh, on the part of of the of the enterprise? Where is this just okay? We're no longer dealing with the antiquated software. It has to be this, and we're we're moving forward. Yeah, I think there. Uh, I I think we are at the cusp of it. Um, you know, I can't. Um, <laughs> I can't tell you uh, the adoption, but, you know, we have about 600 plus uh, global customers today. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I think if we, uh, and I would say, you know, I've spoken uh, and gotten feedback from majority of our customers and, you know, at least 10 plus in in Europe just last two weeks. Um, I think, you know, people, when they see this new wave of how to leverage technology, I think that it's just the sparks, right? Yeah. Um, they're like, well, all of a sudden, you know, think about this, right? Very simple. Uh, one of the favorites, consistent things that I heard last two weeks was. One background check is not always enough to protect your business. Sysiv's continuous criminal monitoring solution helps HR professionals stay informed of any criminal activity post hire, giving you the peace of mind after onboarding. Whether you're in healthcare, transportation, or finance, our continuous monitoring ensures you have real-time data you need to respond to risk immediately. Protect your organization with CISIV's continuous criminal monitor because workplace safety doesn't stop after hiring. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. I just want to get answers to my question, right, Mm -hmm. about how many contractors do I have? Mm -hmm. What is my forecasted spend? What's the budget, right? It, it's just some, what are the top skills I'm hiring? It's, yeah. it's just basic questions. And today, you know, regardless of which technology you use, you are dependent on your MSP in right. some way mm-hmm. or form to right. get the answers, right? Yeah. And imagine like if I'm on a, uh, you know, I'm in a QBR in, in somewhere with my boss mm-hmm. or the board or whatever, uh, and I need answers or something pops up, if I need instantaneous answer, yeah. right? Yeah. The power, power of data and at my fingertips to be able to effectively communicate and be dynamic about how that gets yeah. addressed. And Vigia, I think that's, that's what, the biggest is piece. That, is that Maggie? Yes, is that, that's Maggie. Yeah. yeah. So what, what I love about that, and Ryan and I have seen this in, in, a, in a couple of plays just recently, mm-hmm. is the idea of going to a tab inside software and then finding a place mm-hmm. in analytics and then typing in some type of report or whatever. This menus bit, like, within menus. Menus within menus within menus of – that's a kind of a boomer way of thinking about analytics. Yeah. And and I love the way that you're thinking of it. Like I, I can ask Maggie. Yeah. How many, like you said, how many, how many contractors do we have currently? Boom. There's an answer. And I think, I think that's actually really exciting for people that need analytics – but can't go or don't want to go through that old process to find an out to, to find an answer that's already been out that's already outdated. Yeah, I mean it's and another pro, you know challenge that uh, Ryan coming back to right when is that going to mm-hmm. change? I think as people see the possibility that I don't have to sit in front of a computer, yeah, and need right. to use the system. I can use the system via voice. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think changes the way of how people think about technology, right? If, if I mean, Alexa, right? I mean, I, yep. toothpaste. Mm-hmm. I order toothpaste yeah. because I forget. That's the last thing I remember mm-hmm. to order, right? It happens all the time. But I don't have to plan for it. I can right. just sit and ask and it's going to happen or give me the answers. Right. I think that's what changes, at least in, in the conversations I'm having. And I think the more our customers adopt um, and I think we build the testimonials, right, is going to be a big way in which other vendors are going to see. I mean, they saw a glimpse of what we're launching. We've launched 
uh, at CWS, as you, mm-hmm. as you probably know, the mm-hmm. staffing yeah. SIA's um, premier event in Dallas. Uh, so that's when we launched it. But I think it's going to be the next five years, I would say, at least for people to shift, HR to come to the table, and it becomes a talent conversation for the organization. Right. It's almost like the intersection of all of these and the timing of all of these, Ryan, right. that will really help drive, you know, almost like turning the page uh, on this fragmented industry with intermediaries all around. Right. 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 So, when you, so earlier today, you were, we were talking about this, going through the menus to grab your reports and, <laughs> and all that. And you, you keep saying it's, a, it's very boomer. I had to look it up because I couldn't remember the name of the generation, the silent generation. This is like beyond boomer. This is like way back. Like this, oh, nice. this, this is more than antiquated, right? Like this is, I mean, we, it's we like don't. It's trying to drive people to a website. It's just dumb. Yeah, like, we don't. Like and, no more and, of that. And, and you mentioned Alexa. So the majority of our listens by a good significant amount come from Alexa. Alexa. Yeah. Like it's insane. specifically Alexa, like just asking you know, people asking questions about work yeah. and up comes, comes, comes the shows. It's, it's a real, it's when we were not aware of that No, until we no, started we, looking. The, a question, I, I did some work a hundred years ago for uh, field glass and beeline and I can have yeah. So one of the things, the challenges back then, I mean, it was antiquated back then, but sure. one of the uh, issues that they all had is they had different delivery models and different costing yeah. models. Some would give the platform away for free and then take a percentage of the transactions that went through of it. I don't remember, and this is the odd, so I don't, I don't remember anyone actually making a pure SaaS play back then. They had these like weird financial models that's yeah. what you dug into them, which was crazy confusing for the buyer. Like, okay, now how does this work? You know, uh, et cetera. I'm, I'm assuming y'all have cleaned, uh, that whole thing has been cleaned up since then. Uh, uh, I wouldn't. I mean, just like, <laughs> I, I wouldn't assume. <laughs> I wouldn't assume that. Uh, Damn it. <laughs> it's part of my headwind, right? Um, yeah, so I think there there are, um, I mean, other than the names uh, right. that you mentioned, yeah. I mean, there have been recent um uh, small mid market players that have come in that are starting to uh, you know kind of test out the subscription model uh, again uh, because these are tech only vendors um, and um, you know it makes sense for them right and that's 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 all they do and they just want to be a turnkey solution so it makes perfect sense uh, in nice. fact one of um, as part of the platform we uh, we also support the ability for organizations to do white collar and blue collar. So we call it blended collar. So this oh, cool. is where, you know, you have come, you know, organizations who are manufacturing or logistics, right? Um, mm-hmm. Providers where you have warehouse workers, right? Or truck drivers or hospice care workers, right? So these are all shifts um, or blue collar workers. And uh, so we acquired a company called GRI, which kind of brought in that side of the technology that we have integrated. So if you're a customer and we have a couple of customers who have the need for white collar and blue collar, so Mm -hmm. we kind of have an integrated dashboard. But my my point being, I think the, the part of what we want to get to is the ability for, you know, users to effectively, um, you know, consume technology, right? Where if they, if they're saying, I don't want services, then we have the ability to give them a delivery model that they can just consume tech because they they can manage what they want, right? Uh, or there's a different vendor that can manage the technology and we are, we are out of the business. We just license tech. But I think the supplier sourced model is the common model that still seems to prevail at this right. point, but we are starting to, it's definitely one of the areas that we are working with the analysts in the industry to, mm-hmm. you know, really help us um, kind of, move in that direction and i think 25 would be where we will be rolling out um that option and really working with some you know uh, to push that model but you know mm-hmm. again this is another one which is a a really heavy push because of the way the industry has been it's and probably quite was... a shock for you yeah. coming from sas oh, into this going, what in the hell it, yeah. is well, going on <laughs> So the the in the kind of okay, it's a good good segue. It's a the one that, so two questions I have. One is 
I want to get into the buying questions. We always like to go yeah. down buying questions and what people yeah. need to really truly understand is there as because for whatever reason they may not have a solution yeah. right like this. But before we do that, since William, since you mentioned coming in from SaaS, how crazy <laughs> does it feel to you? For because yeah. we we love when people come into HR tech, you know, first couple of years. How crazy is it to you for the job that you need to do, and how different is it? Is is it really that different? Like your messaging, your positioning, how you're talking to to customers. Yeah, I mean, it is. I mean, I think it's a you know a, a change management yeah. uh, internally and externally, right? Mm -hmm. like, because when you have companies that have evolved from being a services company and then wrapped, you know, sort of these right. scripts and tools around it, it's not tech, right? Let's just be mm -hmm. honest. Right. Okay. It's just, uh, I don't know, a Band-Aid solution that has yeah. been, you know, mm -hmm. created. Um, yeah. Um, but I think the, so it is a very uh, heavy lift, um, you know, organizational effort because it's not just me that's the spokesperson for the company. So it's right. about enablement. It's about training. And, you know, fortunately for me, I own marketing as well. So it's really Smart. sort of turning on the product marketing uh, engine to really work on the messaging, positioning, and then right. even, you know, ensuring that we have the right buyers at the table, right? right. Um, like when we when we have, talking about Maggie, right? Procurement alone is not going to make the cut, right? No. no. We love procurement. No, no. But, you know, if, we need... It the, ends up in procurement. That's it right. Is. When, that's when, they, right. Well, when they cut the check, you, you yeah. like procurement. Yes. Well, they'll, they'll, they'll haggle with price, but really, you're selling to the CHRO, the global head of talent Bingo. acquisition, yes. right. maybe even the CFO, and you're selling to them and once the they IT. get it. You and want IT at the mm -hmm. table because, good point. you know, at the end of the day, this is another piece of technology that goes into the landscape of what they use, what they integrate with, the infosec, security, mm. all the things. So I think it's like training at that level, right, at the buyer level, at the messaging level. And then also equipping our, you know, in addition to sales, our services team to yeah. know how they engage because day to day on a, you know, whoever is the CSC at the client side, being able to effectively communicate the same language, right, um, oh, is, and I, to be honest, I don't even know why it's called a VMS. Yeah, me neither. I, yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, yeah. why is it nobody's able to answer the question? To me, yeah. it's a platform that enables a holistic, comprehensive view of how talent can be provided, like the right match of talent to opportunity, right? Yeah, and yeah, and yeah. it's another lever for companies to think about overall talent strategy. That's how I think about it. Mm -hmm. That's how I think about it. Just in time, the what we learned in manufacturing years ago, yeah. just in time manufacturing, it's just in time right. talent. Yeah. So it's, it's looking at it. I've never understood why they call it BMS. Uh, and no. I've, I've studied it for 20 something years. I've well, still, it's like, why do they call it a tracking system? We, we just talked thing. about this today. Same yeah. thing. It's just, well, it's a 60 year old category that exactly hasn't, hasn't changed. It has changed actually. Um, but it's who owns CS. So you own product and customer, uh, and marketing who is CS. So there is a peer of mine who owns the customer service, um, or client yeah. service and delivery. Okay. Uh, function. Yeah. But y'all are always talking because oh, yeah. you're like connected to the hip because, right. you know, because there's uh, been, we have, I mean, what other, other good, um, thought, you know, sign for evolution, Ryan, back to mm -hmm. your initial question was we are starting to see, you know, the need for product QBRs and service QBRs. Right. So people are slowly starting to see, okay, technology is more important. Also, it's not just one uh, where product or technology gets like 10 minutes, you know, uh, on a conversation. It, it doesn't do justice, right? Because you don't right. get any time to say, how do I get value out of this thing, right? Because in some sh way, shape or form, the customer is paying for it, even though it's called supplier sourced. Right. It, right. They are paying for it. So let's yeah. be, you know, honest. Yeah, so yeah. I think it's it's some good signs for sure. Yeah. So a good question about Maggie. So. So Maggie does she gets into everything right reporting et cetera, right? Does does Maggie at some point get to a spot where maybe the QBR almost ha can go away, where it's interacting with the client, allowing them to truly see everything that they just wouldn't be able to put together 
or even your people may not be able to put together from a human, you know, thought mm-hmm. process. And Maggie kind of marries that together and then helps both organizations scale up a little more and get get better. Yeah, I mean, look, I think um, the possibilities of, you know, being able to plan, leveraging Maggie for mm-hmm. people to plan or expand programs in new countries, new G- would be fantastic, right? And it kind of, to me, I, I think about those futuristic use cases where, right. you know, Maggie's able to do all of that without actually having to have virtual or in-person conversations. It's a Maggie to program team into the client's conversation all happening like mm-hmm. together, right? So I think it's possible, but it's also going to depend on adoption um, and then, you know, the training of Maggie, right? right. Because as we all know, AI requires, you know, more training. So the more mm-hmm. Maggie gets to know you or me or the client, I yeah, think right. that's going to help drive better opportunities to increase sort of the level of engagement of Maggie within mm-hmm. the organization and the program. Yeah. I know that was probably an unfair futuristic question. Yeah, yeah. Flying <laughs> Anything cars. Is but I, with but I, I, it's all I, possible. Yeah, when I when I when I start digging, I'm like, well, it could do this, and, and yeah. what a, what about this? Just because it can, should it? Well, uh, yeah. Tell us a little bit about your kind of your perfect customer, because uh, you've talked about global. Uh, Ryan and I like to get into the like, oh, is, are you industry? Is there certain industries that you love, et cetera, and size of company, et cetera? Just kind of kind of walk the audience through what makes a good prospect for you yeah i mean majority of our customers are fortune 500 companies so pretty enterprise uh, size but you know as i you know as i mentioned our recent uh, you know our acquisition in that process we have um you know inherited businesses and companies or logos uh across europe um you know including uk uki uh uk ireland uh we have some new business we acquired in netherlands right so there's a combo of mid markets also in that um, in that mix, uh, but you know I think industry wise uh, we were you know we are very heavy with tech companies. Um, so you know uh, some of the big names are our companies, and we help them help them with their programs. Um, and then you know finance, insurance, automotive. Um, we have a you know a pretty big chunk of our business that's focused on healthcare. Um, as well uh, in the U.S. and uh, we go ha- we have a separate name for it. It's called Right Sourcing by Magnets. If people don't know, but mm. it's sort of like a, a separate brand because um, because of the nature of how we evolved. Uh, right. And that's a very well known brand in the healthcare market. So we kind of kept it, but you know, um, but it's it's Magnets brand. Um, so we you know we kind of go across and you know with the GRI the we call it the shift solution, right? For blue collar workers and shift capabilities, um, we do have a lot of logistics, warehousing, manufacturing customers um, that you know that we work with. So it's a it's a pretty wide spectrum of of uh, industries that we support. That's fantastic. So the audience is always interested in like the connectivity of the technology. So what is it? What does it need to be? What does Magnet need to be connected to, or what do you find? And uh, and your clients, where does it touch? What else does it touch? Yeah, I mean, it's usually, you know, um, standard systems like a ERP, yeah. right? HRIS are probably the big ones. Um, you know, there's other, other one-offs, you know, tools that companies have at times that, uh, like, for instance, uh, a lot of our customers now ask for APIs to consume reporting or analytics uh, information because... Mm-hmm. Within their organization, they want to have a comprehensive, you know, report. Uh, to So they pull, you know, um, pull data to integrate into their whatever reporting tool of choice, right? Tableau, Power, or whatever you can you can think of any. So there's like, you know, one-off aspects of that. Um, a lot of customers use ServiceNow, um, mm-hmm. for instance. Um, so that's something to integrate into their workflows, um, depending on how they're consuming the contingent approval onboarding process. So there's a, those are probably the big items, uh, but yeah, it always includes integration of, um, you know, um, transactional data, operational data, you know, uh, whether it's invoicing, time cards, you know, all of that right. stuff. 
uh, and, and worker data, obviously, that goes in. Uh, that's a synchronous communication right. or asynchronous, right. depending on um, how the feeds or APIs interact. So f- final question on, on, on my side is, uh, I mentioned it previously, buying questions. What does What would you want to hear a prospect ask you? What is the questions you, they need to, hey, two or three? It. Yeah, if you what, could script the three or four you? or whatever one question, what yeah. would you love to hear or from Or maybe, maybe we change it up this time. Maybe what are the three or four questions that if they asked you, you know that they're serious? Yeah. Oh, well, that's good. Hi there. I'm Peter Zolman. I'm a co-host of the Inside Job Boards and Recruitment Marketplaces podcast. And I'm Stephen Rothberg, and I guess that makes me the other co-host. Every other week, we're joined by guests from the world's leading job sites. Together, we analyze news about general niche and aggregator job board and recruitment marketplaces sites. Make sure you sign up and subscribe today. Yeah, I I think... um... I don't know if or, I have three or, or four, but I will draw in a couple that I, I think are... Yeah. We can um, keep changing the answer, the question. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You want to change the questions on it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so I think one of the, the the intriguing ways for me to have a very healthy conversation and sort of bring them into the fold has been around when custom one, when HR is involved and it's a yeah. talent conversation, right? Mm-hmm. So... To me, really having customers talk about, um, you know, how can you help me, you know, get the right talent? How can you help my mm-hmm. brand, leverage my brand, right? That's when you know that they are interested in a broader talent conversation. They're going to have the right people at the right. table and we can really help them put the pu- puzzle pieces together, right? Um, and bring our partners into the picture if, you know, we have partners mm-hmm. in some cases. So I think that's a very uh, good conversation because then we can actually have a healthy conversation about what they have, you know, baseline it, and then really help them how Magnet can help you further accelerate right. it or fix it or whatever the situation might be. The The second part is um, really around, I think the second most, uh, you know, aspect of it is, you know, when they talk about technology, I think that's mm-hmm. when you know that they know to leverage and, you know, be optimized about what they want to deliver for the organization. Um, and, you know, there have been instances where it is like um, they they come to us only for tech. So tech only conversations, right? Right. So those are very good conversations because then they know that they it's a focused conversation. Yeah. They're in it for the technology. They know they can get data. They can get, you know, all the coolness of what they've seen Mm -hmm. uh, and they really want to optimize their existing program with technology. So I think those are probably the most um, big ones. And there's like the third one I would add is some, you know, we do have a pretty significant data ocean. So uh, which we, you know, it's a system of records that's on top of. So we do have, um, you know, pay and talent intelligence, location intelligence, which is Mm -hmm. sort of an a la carte service that's available so people, a lot of suppliers come to us around that, but it's right. it's not the biggest conversation. The first, the former two are probably the big ones that so, can really be a very healthy and, and um, forward moving conversation for us. So one, one more question. I lied. <laughs> and anyway, I'll let you take it from there. Do any, because I, I don't think we've talked about this. Do any prospects ever come to you in that conversation and focus on candidate experience at all? Or is it solely on on the on the company side and streamlining and making their process better? I, I don't think they lead with that. Um, yeah. you know for sure. Um, because I think if if it, it is probably there somewhere, it gets right. up, mm-hmm. get to that, get to that place mm-hmm. through how we talk about candidate experience and you know hiring manager experience and supplier experience. So that's part mm-hmm. of our how we deliver the message. Yeah. But it's it's not it has not been the leading point uh, of the conversation uh d and i has Mm. been um you know uh, you know something that people do bring up they're looking for different talent pools and again if they're thinking of it as a talent portfolio like a a a financial portfolio then they're thinking about talent in different ways if you're trying to slice and dice that and get Mm -hmm. specific talent you've you've i could see that i could see the conversations getting there pretty quickly 
Uh, real quick, the uh, two things really as for for me finally is you're displacing something, especially at the enterprise. They have something, whether or not it's proprietary or Post-it notes or Excel or another solution. What's that like in terms of the questions that they ask and also the things that that are you know that you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna face if they're if they're ripping something else out and they're putting you in they're getting a better solution check got it but we all know adoption is horrible yeah so like how do we how do we get them to use a better technology uh, is is a question so really it's a displacement question it's how do you it's... deal with displacement. Yeah, it's a really good question. And, you know, uh, one of the names you mentioned, I'm not going to mention names, uh, but uh, um, it has, it, we all know, right, some of these ERP companies uh, have been around for a long time and they get through their way, right? So it's like, I bought this, so I'm going to get this too, right? right and right. Uh, so, so you kind of go into these organizations and you know, some of them have these um, tools like 20, 30 years, and they've customized. It's fascinating for me. They've customized every single button on this <laughs> form, right? I'm like, it's... how much time are you spending thinking about this and thinking about localization of all this stuff? Oh, yeah. Right? I mean, it's, oh, yeah. it's, yeah. it's, it's, custom, it's custom software by now. At that point, yeah. It's, yeah. it's unrecognizable to like what they normally sell. I think part of that's also a false perception of accomplishment when yeah, when a company yeah. overcompensates for customization to that yeah. level. Adding process. Yeah, I almost buttons. feel like it's, hey, we know we're deficient in some area. Let's do this and look how beautiful it is. And it, well, it I was, kind of, I was uh, telling somebody the other day, my uh, cousin runs – for, so one of for, for one of the large ERP who runs the aerospace division, and one of the larger aerospace companies, they pay almost eighty million dollars a year and just change orders. And it, and he's told me mm. he's like it's custom software like what we normally have, and what they have, they're, they're the two aren't even alike. They're not even close yeah. to one another. And so I'm... I could see people that being a change issue. If they've got the buttons colored the yeah. right way and things like that. But from a displacement standpoint, that's the conversation that's the hardest, right? Yeah. Is uh, when you have that much, you know, penetration and people sometimes forget, yeah, the software maybe didn't sound as expensive, but the amount of customizations and the SOWs you've opened <laughs> to get this done, it could be, right? Seven, eight, eight figure number, right? Oh, yeah. Um, and I think... Back to what I said earlier, that's the conversation I have. The, the conversation, the statement is you shouldn't have to customize a system to this right. extent. The right. system needs to train to you, right? So I think that is the that is the real trigger to make people think. And, you know, mm -hmm. certainly uh, people want to, but I think it's that um, the adoption within the organization or, you know, or even the process that people get sort of, accustomed to for 30 years i mean think about some of these companies right i mean people are on yeah. the change right mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. it's not just getting the you know the decision makers on board i think sometimes when you have all of these desperate you know dis disparate organizations and people coming in if people worry about change management and adoption of such a big decision on how it's going to impact their people right and what is it going to disrupt Right. Uh, what you know, and what is it going to cost the business? So I think those are probably the the hardest and you know conversations that I've had um, to yeah. uh, to say make the leap. Yeah, we they actually, see the beauty. Actually a better choice. They see eloquence. They see that this is a better application, better use of their time, better use of capital, and then all of a sudden now they've got to recognize. Oh, but everyone knows how to use this other system. How the hell are we going to get them to use it? Uh, yeah. Which last question for me is: uh, How do you do your implementations? How do you stand it up? Do you have consulting firms that help you with that, or do y'all? We we do have it an yourself? internal implementations team that yeah. you know we go through uh, a whole project management approach, right? Yeah, to yeah. kick off the discovery to um, you know providing a best practice solution. So it's you know because we we have customers across a wide variety of industries, so we can at right. least lead with. 
best practices and then trying to minimize the number of customizations because nobody right. wants to no, no. you know support yeah. one off from a product perspective nor oh, yeah. think about okay anytime something new happens all of a sudden you don't get it because you've customized it and it's not relevant to you anymore so there's you know so it's it's having those conversations um with the customer but yeah that's uh so we do have a team that that does that awesome well th thank you so much for coming on the show this has been absolutely wonderful uh and thank you for your time